team from uh, Extraterrestrial. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start just a, just a little bit. I got a question for you. So this is in a, in a way it's there's a strange similarity to me to time crimes because time crimes is so goddamn complicated and interwoven and it takes you a little while to figure out where everything's going. So I want to ask you about your writing process and the evolution. Like so, it feels like there's an idea here about a a spaceship and then a, a romance that happens that really has nothing to do with the spaceship uh, and just the interaction between the characters, but. How does it evolve to become so so complicated and intertwined, and how long does that take? Oh, um, do you want to answer this question? <laughs> okay, uh, when I, um, after, right after Sun Crimes, I was into the develop of a new film, which was going to be, uh, again, a maze filled with twists and a really complicated plot. Um, and you know, this movie was taking a lot of time to, to, to happen. In fact, it's, it, it, has, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to share to, to um, um, if everything goes well, it's going to be shoot next year. Um, if everything goes uh, the way I want, it goes, the first sequence of that movie is going to take part in this same theater. Uh, yeah. Um, but, but that movie, Windows, is again a maze with, filled with twists and a really complicated plot. I, I wrote 11 draft, the whole thing. Uh, I, I, in the middle, I wanted to make a movie which was the opposite, because I don't want to become this kind of Night Shyamalan director that makes uh, <laughs> three movies look like the same, and then people is, uh, is uh, angry when later movies are different so okay let's take this um, chance to make something which is totally the opposite and i wanted to make a, a, a character driven movie in which everything that happens in the film is because of the characters is because because of this guy because of julio what what julio builds so i i wanted to make a write a story which is a totally simple thing with few characters uh, interaction between characters but I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to drive. How, sorry. I don't know how to write simple scripts because this is the thing that came. <laughs> it's filled with. In fact, it's something I invented in this film. This is the first time you see um, that in, in a film, which is wrong. The um, the wrong revelation, where when you have this flashback scene, black and white, and all the characters they have a new um, lecture of the film somehow, but they are wrong. <laughs> this is something that doesn't happen in Shyamalan films. For example, Bruce Willis at the end of The Sixth Sense, he has a revelation, but he's wrong. He, he wasn't dead. So <laughs> I wanted to explore that kind of uh, um, that, that that kind of um, um, situation. Okay, you have a revelation, but you're totally wrong. <laughs> and so it's it's a really complicated script, but I tried. I really tried to make something simple, but it is not. It didn't came. I think, I think it's, it's, it's incredibly complicated if you think about it. Yeah, you know, we had we had this this reference through the whole shooting. Okay, this movie is War of the Worlds, the Steven Spielberg film. But instead of following uh, Tom Cruise, we're following the wife. <laughs> no. So um. I have, a, I have a question. So, uh, um, Nacho has a has a reputation of uh, being maybe rambunctious at times, uh, uh, as referenced by the color purple. Um, but I just wanted to find out, uh, you know, how it's how it is working with Nacho in probably close quarters, day in and day out. Are I there... didn't see his dick yet. <laughs> <laughs> But you see mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason I don't show it. <laughs> no, uh, it's really crazy working with him because he worked with a, a stick, a big stick. <laughs> <laughs> no, she she always uh, she have a really quick uh, mind, 
Sorry, my English, okay? And she is changing the text all the time because uh, she wants to give more and more. That's the reason the screen is so complicated, you know? And it's so difficult because this movie, we made it in three weeks. And, and uh, there are so many long shots. And, and with a lot of marks, Marta? Different positions in space. Marks. Um, uh, marks, okay. Um, he is always changing the marks and changing the effects. And it's so, so fucking difficult. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad that he issues me for his movie. I'm happy. Um, so two little, I guess, nuggets, if you will, that are, are really awesome to me in this movie. The, uh, tennis ball cannon, and uh, the gigantic uh, coffee cup. Um, so, what, where, where the fuck did all that come from? What's the... Okay, uh, we, we needed a menace from the sky at some point, but uh, a real menace, real alien menace didn't have a space in this story. So, um, how can you um, attack one building in front of you uh, with a message, with a ballet. Uh, the, the ballet is a message at the same time. So we, we came with this idea, but the tennis ball with the message. By the way, you can make your own, your own if, if you want if you want to have some merchandise from this movie, you just need a tennis ball and a marker. When I was making Time Crimes, I was trying to make a monster that was really a cheap costume for Halloween. If you want to if you want to dress as the pig mummy from St. Crans this Halloween, it's pretty cheap. You only need bandages and pink, uh, pink pincher, pink uh, uh, pintura, uh, pink uh, color, and a coat and a scissors. <laughs> if you wanna have, okay, if, if you wanna have a, a extraterrestrial ball in your house, <laughs> you just need to write Julia's fucking Julio. <laughs> in a ball. It's pretty cheap. I not I not only I make cheap films for cheap people. <laughs> and the giant coffee cup. And the giant coffee cup. Uh, you know what? There's something really funny in this film because it, it wasn't something that, that I had in mind. At the beginning of the film, he drinks a coffee and he says, "Oh, it's burning." And at the end, we see a burning coffee. <laughs> Oh, it's such a clever metaphor of, I don't know what. <laughs> it's so clever. It's, I don't know, it was such a big coincidence. So I, I didn't, I didn't uh, came with this idea, but it happens in the film. Okay, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have this in mind. But if you're going to talk in your webpage or Facebook or Twitter about this film, just let's pretend I had this in mind. It's so clever. <laughs> So, um, uh, we, we thought about very briefly when we were thinking about what we're going to do special for the screening, uh, and then we ultimately did absolutely nothing, but uh, um, <laughs> we thought about renting a tennis ball cannon and having you fire out uh, novelty tennis balls to the crowd, but um, after uh, further counsel from, from legal and management, we <laughs> decided that would be a really awesome idea, but probably the worst, uh, the worst possible idea, so maybe, right. maybe, maybe for the theatrical release. So. Yeah. All right, do we have some, uh, some question from the, uh, from the audience? The one here on the aisle? Hi, uh, yeah, uh, I really enjoyed spending time in your mother's vagina. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My mother is pretty happy too. <laughs> have you decided in your mind why the aliens are here? Yeah, if, if I should, if, if this movie becomes a huge success, who knows? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I, shoot the sequel, I will shoot the sequel. It takes part in four years later. The UFOs, uh, the mothership uh, uh, alien, uh, they are still there, up there in the sky. They are just fucking with us. They, they, they don't come out from the... Everyone is like, uh, uh, all the people come back to their houses, uh, normal life comes back, but the UFOs are still there. So it's such a ridiculous situation because no one managed to get inside the UFOs and they don't move from the sky. They're just messing with our heads there. It's, it's such a okay. The, the same way, the same way he his characters 
um, decides um, he renounces in order to um, uh, the girl. Aliens renounces in order to the humans. That's all I have to say. <laughs> okay, but uh, when, when he says, when his character says there's no reason, he's talking by the, 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 the the screenwriter, there's no reason. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I wish the script, the script of this movie goes at, at, until this point. From this point, there's no reason. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like the birds. You like the birds? <laughs> it's classic. <laughs> So do we have another uh, another question from the audience? Right here. Was there ever a version of the screenplay where one of them was an alien? Or not? I'm going to tell a really funny story. <laughs> um, you, you know, you uh, when you when once I made this this script and it, when I shoot the film and it, this this year it was in the Cannes Festival, but it was only a, a promo, not not the uh, not the whole film, just a promo. Um, and I received a call suddenly from the Winston Company, one of the Winston brothers. I don't, I'm not going to tell you which one of them. He calls me and he says, okay, just tell me which is the end of this film. Because I've seen the promo, I read the synopsis. I want to know how this movie ends. And I was like, uh, I, I prefer you to watch the film. It's so complicated to explain the end. And he told me, the only way to finish this film, the only right way is when we discovered that the alien is her, the girl is the alien, and it was like, okay, um, sure, um, I, I prefer you watch, you watch the film. And when it showed the uh, the um, the promo in the internet, in YouTube, and so, a lot of people were saying, okay, we we don't need to see the movie. We know she's the alien at the end. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know why people keep thinking this way. It doesn't make sense. Uh, that I never consider one of these characters to be the alien. That's another film. Maybe I shoot it next year. I don't know. <laughs> but this is not this film. I don't. I, I didn't want it to make a big twist at the end because um, I prefer to play a different game this time. Okay, we are we are tired of twists at the end, big twists. I don't know. And at the end we discovered. <laughs> <laughs> My next film is going to have a big twist at the end. <laughs> I hope you like it then. <laughs> Not now. So what can you tell, tell us about Windows? You referenced Windows. What, what, what loosely is that project? Okay, the, the reason Windows is taking so much time is that uh, it's, um, it's going to have an average budget, which for me is awesome. <laughs> Uh, it's a thriller in the in the in the way um, Tank Crimes was a thriller involving a girl, a hero, and a masked guy. The, the complicated thing is that this this movie is going to be uh, in real time, and it's going to take only one shoot through all the film. It's a continuous shoot, and all the action is going to be followed through the screen of a laptop. <laughs> I'm already tired of this film. <laughs> it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be so complicated to make this film. I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. It's, I'm exhausted, if, and I haven't started shooting it, so I don't know. You know, when, when you when you're following situations through the screen of a laptop, you're dealing with a lot of uh, different language, YouTube, uh, Messenger, uh, Twitter, a lot of different um, languages, different codes. Story is being developed through the and, and it's an action packet film, so I, I don't know. Uh, I'm already tired of this film. <laughs> do, you have a, do you have another question from the audience? Oh, there in the back. Is there any meaning to the giant unbreakable jar of peaches? Oh, yeah, that was another like, nice little nugget, if you will. Tell us about the jar of peaches. What's the metaphor? <laughs> <laughs> the jar of peaches. There's no reason. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, maybe uh, I, one, one, uh, one girl in Spain after the San Sebastian Film Festival, she said to me, the pictures were like a feminine uh, metaphor. 
because a bit. Uh, <laughs> it feels like a pussy. Uh, maybe, maybe it, it, it's a symbol of the feminine side of the story. So there's, there's no reason. I'm sorry. There's no reason. Okay, it's a, there's, there's no reason. Do you like the pictures? Yeah. Yeah. You want to make if, if you want to make your. Uh, Merchandise from this movie. It's pretty cheap. You just buy a jar of pictures and put it in a, next to your Matrix uh, toys. Yeah. Is this is the Millennium Falcon. This is uh, this is uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 people from Lord of the Rings. Elaya and all these people. Hi Elaya, where are you? <laughs> Hi Elaya! So I had this, this, this little Frodo toy and the Millennium Falcon and the pictures from Saturation. We probably have time for just a couple more questions. We got one, one in the back row. So I, I'm pretty certain I was actually sitting next to you at the first screening of Time Crimes because I kept thinking, who is this guy? He's wiggling, he's changing places, or he's like wiggling all over the place. Who does he think he is? And then you got out to talk after that, and oh, I understand. Um, so were you more nervous the first time uh, Time Crime screen, screens here or tonight? You know, which is the similar? The similarity between these two moments when I showed Time Crimes and Now. Mm -hmm. I was so nervous during the film, then and now. I just drank a whole bottle of <laughs> white wine. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, now I'm totally drunk. <laughs> yeah. It's a trick. <laughs> So we got uh, we got one more question right right here, sir. Do you have any more shorts in you that you'd like to do as opposed to features? Any ideas for shorts? For shorts, not features, just shorts. I I made several shorts uh, throughout this time. They are on YouTube. Just put my short name in YouTube, and you'll see a lot of uh, short films, um, sex tapes, and. <laughs> Uh, to, to yesterday, we uh, released a video clip I directed for a Spanish singer. <laughs> I am the drunk guy, not you. <laughs> I made a video clip with, uh, I don't know, I made a Matrix commercial uh, a few time ago. You just put my name in YouTube and have a night, have a good night with me. <laughs> All right, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you one and all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.